Today we're going to cover email and protocols. First of all, what's email? We all use it. What exactly is it? Email stands for electronic mail. Electronic mail. What is that? Well, mail is essentially the sending of a message from one point in space to another point in space. Sending a message from your house to grandma's house. It's the same thing, but electronic. What does that mean? Well, you have a computer and you're sending a message to another computer. Pretty basic, it's an electronic message. Learning a bit more about what's under the hood here though can set you up well just to use technology in general, but also to be a software developer. So let's break this down a little bit. First of all, as a point of review, the internet is two things. It's the physical hardware of a connected network. This fantastic diagram you see here is a bunch of computers all connected and they're all around the world and there's millions of them, if not billions. So the internet is the physical hardware and it is a set of protocols, established agreements, protocols about how to format and send information over this connected network. Now there's a lot of different types of information that can be sent over a connected computer network. One of them we've discussed a little bit before this is information about those electronic documents in the World Wide Web, web pages. There's got to be a way to format and send those from computer to computer. Email, electronic mail, is another such type of data. It, in terms of the structure of the data, it doesn't look anything like what a web page is. Well, what does the structure look like? You're quite used to it. I'll show you. Here's some of the basic elements of what an electronic message should have. And again, you can be quite familiar with these because if you use email, you've seen all of these things before. If you look at the structure of the data involved in an electronic message, some of the basics are this. Who is this addressed to? Is there anybody you want to copy? Is there anybody you'd like to blind carbon copy so that they get a copy of it, but nobody sees the fact that they're going to receive a copy of it? Who's it from? What's the subject of this message? What's the body or the actual main text of the message? Are there any attachments that go along with this message? And if so, what, is, what are those attachments? Again, this is probably something you're like, well, I kind of get that. I use email all the time. But if you think about this, the structure of this data, the format of it is quite unique to an electronic message. If you're, for example, going to send, oh, a document like a book to someone, it's not going to have this same structure at all. The concept of sending a book that you've written and all the consecutive pages of it that has a a two and a carbon copy and a blind carbon copy from subject body. That doesn't fit that concept of that type of data. The type of data here with an electronic message requires these basic elements. So a protocol. Now that we know that there's a basic way to structure this data, you can agree upon a, a format for this so that any computer in the world who knows what this format is can have someone create an electronic message, an email, and format it so that all the other computers in the world that know that format will be able to use it, send it to another computer that knows that format, and that computer can then break it down and show it on a screen because they know how the data is formatted. Again, that's a use of the internet itself, the physical hardware, and the protocol for sending electronic mail. Let's go into a little bit more about how this works physically. Let's take a look at this diagram which can illustrate the basics of how email works. First of all, let's look at the two people using this system. We have Bob and Sue. Bob has his own computer. Let's look at this. This computer is the physical hardware, a personal computer, and a piece of software installed in that computer called an email client. This is a special piece of software that understands the protocols involved in sending electronic messages, email. So Sue has the exact same thing. She's got a computer, a personal computer right here. It's got a piece of software on it. It's an email client. This email client also knows about the protocols. So Bob wants to send Sue an email. So it goes on to his computer and he types it up. It says to Sue from Bob, subject, birthday party. Uh, here are the directions to get to the birthday party. 
um, please bring chocolate cake. And there are no attachments. Types all this up. And the email client takes all that data, formats it according to the protocol for sending email, and then sends it. Now, he does not send it directly to Sue. He sends it out to another machine called an email server. Now again, it's just a computer. It's got hardware, a central processing unit, memory, everything a computer has. And it's got a specialized piece of software on it. It's an email management software or email serving software or email hosting software. Its job is to manage receiving, storing, and sending out electronic messages. So let's look at this. Bob writes his email about the birthday party, chocolate cake, that's important. The email client software formats it according to the protocol for sending emails. And then it sends it to this server. And it sits here in a big old bucket of emails. It's not a bucket. It's just stored in memory somewhere, probably on a hard drive. And it sits there and waits. And what's it waiting for? It's waiting for people that are here in the two or carbon copy or blind carbon copy area to check with this email server and say, hey, do you have any messages? My name's, my name's Sue, any messages for me? Now, Sue has a very unique identifier. It's an email address. We've all got one or several, but that's Sue. So Sue, Sue's at home and says, oh, you know, we talked the other day and Bob was gonna send me an email about getting directions to the party. I haven't seen it. So she turns on her computer and she opens up this piece of software called her email client. And she tells it, please check for any new messages. Or maybe it just does that when it turns on. It'll be fine too. So that email client connects to this email server. So this is just one computer connecting to another one. This is what the internet is for. And along with this is this piece of data. Hi, I'm Sue. Sue at mail.com or whatever. Got any messages for me? And the software checks its bucket of emails. And, oh, as a matter of fact, I do. And then sends it back and she receives it. And then she can look at it and see that, in fact, chocolate cake is what she needs to bring and where to go. It's that simple cycle. By the way, she could actually take that email that she got and add something onto it. Thanks a lot. Don't have chocolate. Is German chocolate okay? And it most definitely is, by the way. And she'll send that out. It'll get stored on this email server, waiting for Bob to check his emails. And the cycle goes back and forth. But it's important to know that there's someone in the middle here that acts as a repository for these mail messages. You just sit and wait until they're needed or called for, requested. There you go. That is a basic email system. Here's a couple additional notes about these protocols for sending electronic mail, protocols for sending email and how they work. You can see from this email server, there could be a couple different things you do with the messages that are in the bucket. When Sue, for example, checks to see if she has any messages, and there is in fact that original message about the chocolate cake from Bob sitting there, once the email server receives the request from Sue for that email and sends it back to her and knows that she received it, do they delete it from the computer or not? Do they remove it from the email server or not? That's one key difference between the various protocols there are for sending electronic mail. And there are a few different protocols. One of the protocols is called POP, Post Office Protocol. In this protocol, by the way, when Sue retrieves that email and her computer has informed the email server that, hey, yeah, I got that email, thanks. The server will in fact delete it. It's a thing to know if you ever come across this protocol for sending electronic mail is to know that once the requester has retrieved their emails from the email server, those emails are deleted from the email server. Why is that significant? Well, here's what it means. If this physical computer dies, that's the only place the copy of that email is. Because once you received it, it got deleted from the server. There are other protocols that keep a copy of it there 
so that if you used a different computer and sent a message to the server, it said, hey, got any messages for me? It'll say, yeah, there's this one that you already got. I'll send it to you again if you want. And you'll get that message, and now you have a copy on your computer. But under that other protocol, they keep that copy there so you can do it. Again, this is just a matter of preference and what you want the computer system to do. That protocol that does keep a copy of the email messages on the email server is called IMAP, Internet Message Access Protocol. Kind of means what it says. Over the internet, you can gain access to that message from whatever computer you connect to the email server from.